Hello, hello. All right, go ahead and open it up right away here. Dan really has embraced the challenge of the, the next man up mentality, saying it really is your identity. But just from your perspective, um, you know, having to replace some of the pieces that you'll need to potentially two offensive linemen to your, your, your bell cow, if you will, in the backfield, um, how, how challenging is this week for you? I, I think uh, I think we knew that these weeks were going to come. Really, any NFL season, this happens. Uh, and so that's been our challenge all the training camp is making sure we have the right depth in place and feel really good about, about the guys that are, could potentially step up and play more snaps this week. Um, they're guys we believe in. They've been here, and they know our system. So expect no drop-off in production. First name mentioned that running back rotation, but Bam Knight did get uh, promoted off the practice squad. Um, you've had him here for a few weeks. Just uh, what, what do you think he maybe can offer you if he gets a chance to see the field? Yeah, I think it, that's been the big challenge is since he's been here, how much of the nuance of what we do can he pick up? He's already got a uh, high football IQ. He's been in the league for a few years now. Um, and I say that even though he's an NC State guy, you know, it's a. It's a tough one, tough one to admit. But no, he's he's doing a phenomenal job picking it up and and we'll see as the week goes along how much he can handle. But I've been encouraged with what he's shown on scout team over the last couple of weeks and so far this week in terms of uh, running ability, pass protection, and receiving ability. Just to stay with running back, how uh, how equipped is Jameer to play more of a role inside the tackles if, if David can go? Yeah, Gibby can do anything. So yeah. We'll, we'll see what all we ask him to do, but we, we feel very comfortable with him doing anything that our running backs need to do. And you know, he and Bijan, I'm sure, are going to be compared to each other for like the, the entirety of their careers, really. Um, he's pretty quiet, though. How much does that, how much do you think it fuels him to, I don't know, game within the game? Sort of I, I don't know. I, I don't know that one. Yeah. Their, um, their pass defense numbers look great on paper. Um, I haven't had really a chance to, to watch them. So, what, what do they do? Uh, really well that's allowed them to kind of shut down their first two opponents? They, they've been, uh, and this goes, I mean, let me just start with the defensive coordinator. Uh, you know, it's, it's his first time calling it, but going back to New Orleans and and who he's been, they are relentless up front. You know, former D-line guy, um, they do a great job keeping their front line fresh, and you'll see a big rotation. They'll play as many as eight or nine guys up front there over the course of a game um, and see significant number of snaps. So they want to keep them fresh. Those guys, uh, they go hard. Their stunt stuff is very difficult for teams to pick up. And so they generate a lot of pressure in the passing game. So I think that helps with the first two weeks you've seen a drop off of, uh, of, of uh, passing yards. But I do think uh, he has those guys playing really well up front. They're sticky on the back end. Um, a lot of respect for 24. He's he's as good as we've seen, you know, so far. I know it's early in the season, but in man coverage, uh, number three, the new the new guy, uh, Bates. He's been around for a long time and highly productive player. Has great instincts, knows for the football, uh, can play in the post, can play down in the box, and and very productive either way. So um, it's a good complement between rush and coverage. It's a lot of that. Uh, pass rush success for them is interior based. I mean, they've got some some big names obviously there on the inside. And uh, if so, how, how much of a challenge is that for a quarterback when when the pressure's coming from the, the inside of the pocket? Yeah, I you know uh, I, I I feel good about our quarterback's ability to stand in there when there is pressure and deliver the football. But certainly when the when the pocket gets collapsed, it's it's difficult to to hang in there um, even even for the best of them. So. That'll be our challenge is keeping the, the width and the depth of, of the pocket clean for Jared um, and get the ball out on time. We got to get guys open. So it's a, that's what we're working through as a staff right now. How quickly can we, can we come together and feel really good about our matchups, both in protection and in the pass game? And Dan, Dan caught some heat for just the uh, you know, late game lack of aggressiveness, I guess, in some people's eyes this past week. Just how did you feel about you know, that last drive? urgent you guys were to, to try to get in the end zone there. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we talk about these situations. Um, this is year three now with Coach Campbell as as head coach. I think he and I are very much aligned in how we see the game. Um, going into that drive, uh, we knew at a minimum we had to get in field goal range. 
and if we did kick the field goal, we didn't want to leave any time for them to respond. So that was first and foremost. And uh, obviously, an offense uh, like ours that we feel really strongly about, we want shots in the end zone to win the game. We want that on us. Um, we had opportunities within the plays that were called to get the ball a little bit closer, and I think the shots would have come to the end zone from there. But uh, I know we didn't push it into the end zone, but was very happy with Jared, what his decision making was, and we came really close to executing uh, a touchdown. Did you not take the shots because of field position, like where you were? Yeah, I think uh, it depends week to week, but in that particular instance, uh, we were aware. I don't think time was an issue. We had plenty of time with two timeouts, and we were um, we were just making sure we handled it really well. That we were a manageable field goal at a minimum with no time left, and had an opportunity to get it into striking range. In retrospect, would you have taken any shots? At no, I felt really good about what we did. Yep. And uh, tight end can be a tough position for young players to come in and play. What's allowed Sam to have the, the comfort level that appears he's got early in his career? I think it's him. I think it's just how he's built, and we, we knew that. I mean, Brad does a great job investigating not just uh, what they put on tape, but also the type of people that they are. And so he's very smart. Uh, he's very mature. And so he, he's been, for a young player, rookie, he's been very professional. He's diligent in note-taking and meetings. He applies it and walk through. He works hard and walk through, and then it carries over to the practice field, which in turn shows up on game day for us. So um, I think I said last week when talking about him, I have a lot of faith in, in his coach. I think Coach Hyden deserves some recognition for the job he's done because that's, that's a hard thing to do with a rookie tight end is get him prepared, and, and he's done a phenomenal job. It's uh, Coach Hyden's birthday today, by the way, too. So shout out to him for that. Big 47. It might not be the uh, the best measure of efficiency, but you're averaging 3.6 yards per carry on the ground. Yeah. Um, where are you in, in terms of how happy you've been? Yeah. We, we are. Uh, we're very close, but we, we are not where we need to be yet. Um, you see the potential when you watch the tape. And uh, I think it's just a matter of time before we start hitting some bigger ones. I really do. Um, but it, you, you turn it on and you can say it's one guy here, there, and that's, I mean, you say that every week, but we're, we're very close from not just having these two, three yard gains, but having explosive runs. I think that's, I think that's what shows up. Um, normally when you say, hey, one guy's awful, well, that's the difference between a three yard gain and a five or six yard gain. These are the difference between 12, 15 yard gains. Can you speak to the challenges that Benet had actually switching back to the left side and then if and when the time comes that he moves back to the right side, um, the challenges that he could face? Yeah, I, uh, it, it, is, it is a little difficult changing from one side that he's, he's been uh, working on, and I think he's admitted that he, it's taken some time. Um, but we see growth every single day. He's getting more comfortable with it, and um, I, I feel very what, – whatever side he's on, we feel very good about the production we're going to get out of him. Another big game for him just over these last couple of years. Has is, is he grown at all, or is he still pretty much just the same guy that you remember? Man, he, he's steady Eddie. And I think the comfort level with Jared continues to show up. You know, there are things that we don't necessarily rep in practice that do show up in the in the game that Jared knows. I think, heck, it was that first drive last week. We, we ended up getting him on a back shoulder, which I don't know how many times we did that in training camp. I don't think we did that at all in training camp. But there's just a natural rapport. Um, those guys are usually on the same page. So he, uh, he's a guy that sh has shown up those first two weeks for us, and we need to continue to get him the ball. Okay. Guys, take it easy today. It's very good. Appreciate it. All right, going into this week, um, one and one. All right, and it's a, uh, it's a long season, and I guys know that. I think that's the, uh, the one thing that I said to you guys um, going to the last game that – you know, every game is that one game, and we focus on the next game after that game, and that's what we're doing. So um, there's some things that we like that we did. There's some things we don't like. Um, we're going to move forward and try to improve on things that we, uh, that we didn't like. Dan mentioned um, specifically about the defense, a lack of discipline. Yeah. Um, 
do you agree with that? And, and how do you is that is that on the players more or on the coaching staff mm -hmm. not getting to the players? Well, I would say this: um, when you have that, it goes both ways. And I've said this several times that coaching staff and us as a defense, man, this is a partnership. We don't look at things as player, coach, and all. We look at this as the defense. So um, I would say execution on all, at all levels, right, has to be better, all right? So, and I'm going to say that with players. I'm going to say that with coaches. Um, and I'm going to point the finger at me first, right, because that's where it always points at. So we just have to do a better job and um, all that, at all angles. And I'm looking forward to this week of making sure we get that done. Things you know, what didn't you like and how do you go about fixing those things? Well, let me talk about things we did like first. Um, one thing we focused on was uh, improving our run defense in the offseason. And our guys have done a really good job of that. Um, I don't know what the stats say right now, but I know that our guys are doing a good job of it. And that's technique-wise. That's fundamental. That's uh, scheme-wise of understanding where we want guys to be at. So I really, really like that. Um, we got to do a better job with our pass rush, all right? And that's us as coaches trying to scheme guys and doing things. That's players also just executing their their job. So um, that's one thing that we have to get better at. And also, when you look at the pass defense, man, you, we just got to win. And we got to make sure we put guys in position to win. Because I know, like you said last week, you said before, right, sacks aren't the only thing that matters. Yeah. But so how do you judge what's a good pass rush and what's not, you know? Anytime you're moving the quarterback off his spot, and not letting him go to his first read for the most part is a pretty good job. And actually, all the guys have done that. You know, and I would say this, you got to give those quarterbacks, right, Mahomes is Mahomes, but you got to give Geno a lot of credit for how he operated. Because he did go to his second read. He did move and run a lot. And he did, uh, he did a good job of finding those guys. Still coming upon your guys to bring it down, I guess, ultimately. Absolutely. I mean, that's the name of the game. <laughs> it's, it's blocking, tackling, and running. Um, and yes, we got to tackle. You know, and again, I would always say that me as the coordinator, I got to make sure we put every guy that we have um, in position to try to go make plays on the quarterback. I thought you did a, a good job of moving Geno off his spot a lot in that game, as mentioned, with both the, the four-man and the, the blitzes that you, you yeah. unleashed. But it um, seemed like he was able to hit that first read quite often. And so is there a, a, a disjointedness in the marriage of Russian coverage right now for you guys? I wouldn't say that. Um, I wouldn't say that at all. I think the one thing that we have to do is just continue to understand what we're trying to do as a defense overall. I don't think, I think our Russian coverage will always be, will always fit. Um, and again, man, we have some new guys in that back end and they're coming to a new defense for the most part. So um, we all have to understand exactly what we're trying to do when it comes to the coverage part. And that will happen. I have total confidence that it will happen. I mean, it happened last year when the guys started improving as the season progressed. And I see that's happening this year. The run defense being one thing that you do, like you got a really big test, obviously, this week. Just some thoughts on Bijan and what he's done already. And that running game is a little too. The thing that's funny to me is everybody brings up Bijan. Um, but, man, there's a lot of different parties that goes into them having a really good um, rushing attack. Uh, number one is the coach. Uh, he does a really good job of being creative and moving guys around to gain leverage. Uh, two is, uh, I mean, 25. Man, he is a hammerhead now. Um, I tell you what, it's two different styles of running back. You have Bijan that has to jump cuts, and he's going to make people miss. Then you have 25 that comes in. He's getting like right downhill. So as a defense, like you have to get ready for both type of runners. So I think they kind of throw you off in that aspect. And then you look at the line that they have. Um, and they do a really good job in this wide zone blocking. So uh, we have to do a good job with our hands. We have to do a good job of making sure we don't get cut off. And our guys are really studying that. And we were actually practicing that quite a bit, not just in practice, but in walkthroughs, and making sure we give our guys that look. Another quarterback they can run to, obviously, a different yeah. offensive attack, you know, but just how do you prepare for that? Obviously, different flavors than last week. Well, I said that last week. This is how the league is going to. You know, these quarterbacks that can run, get out the pocket and make plays with their feet. Um, you're not just going to sit back in the pocket and just watch, watch guys just throw it around the yard anymore. They're going to have guys that can get out the pocket and make some plays. So we just got to do a good job of making sure we crush the pocket, keep them in the pocket, make them play quarterback. And then we got to do a good job of getting them to the ground. Coach, what stuck out to you the most about how Tracy Walker is prepared for an opportunity to come back in like this? Hey, Trace is a pro. And regardless of the situation, Trace is going to prepare like he's a starter. And that's how you want all you guys to operate. Um, I say this in the meeting room weekly that um, every guy on that defense is in the meeting room and they're hearing the same things uh, as far as scheme 
as the starters are. So it, there's no excuse for not being able to come in the game and execute the way we need to execute. So he's always took that approach. Um, and that's why Tracy um, like will always be a valuable asset to us uh, uh, as a defense. He said something yesterday that he said, you know, even when I wasn't playing, I was still, I still had input in the game plan. Can you just explain that a little bit, like why you go to some of your, your vets, you know, to, to seek their input and what, what they provide, I guess, in that regard? Listen, I always, those guys are on the field for the most part. And to me, it's more of striking conversation than anything else. Just understanding how they think, um, what they see on tape, um, what coverage they like. Um, I'm always going to tell them what I like and what I think uh, for the most part. And I just like to hear them, hear what they have to say. And you'll be amazed at some of the, uh, the uh, intelligence as far as the players that we have, as far as um, how to attack a team. And it's, it's, it's fun to, to get in those conversations with those guys. Incorporate some of that, but do you ever learn things too? You know what I mean? Like you guys watch so much, not like anything surprising you, but do you maybe it's even like learn what this guy really likes to do and build around. I learn more about the player on who he is and how he studies. You know, to me, that's what I really get out of that for the most part. I'm this because I don't want to assume I, I understand uh, what their assignments are, but your interior pass rush, you know, that was a thing we talked about needing more of this year. Yeah. Just wondering through the first two games, maybe your outside guys are getting some pressure. I'm not seeing it as much from the inside, what, what do you, um, how you, how do you feel about the way the interior pass rush is operating these first two? Well, listen, everybody on our defense uh, has strengths and has weaknesses. Um, and you look at our run defense, you see what those interior guys are doing. They're doing a really, really good job. Um, are they Aaron Donald? No, they're not. There's not many people in this league that's like that. You know, so we have to do a good job, or I have to do a good job of trying to scheme some things up so those guys can get a chance to, uh, to like get to the quarterback, maybe pick games and things like that so those guys have a better chance. So um, that's going to be my job to help those guys do that. Aaron, you mentioned uh, it's early, one and one. You've got a okay. lot of season ahead of you. Um, when you're talking, when we're talking about lack of discipline and some other stuff, uh, Dan mentioned rat ball and playing within the scheme. And all yeah. That. Do you feel that you have enough buy-in right now from your players, or is that something that needs to develop? Absolutely. Absolutely is buy-in. And... Um, you keep going to the, the discipline part. When you look at this here one game, you know, I don't see that as an issue right, for us. I just see this as having a new players that's trying to like, get themselves like, to understand exactly what, what AG wants as far as secondary play. Um, that was the same thing that went on last year. You might ask the same question last year. You might be the one talking about discipline last year. And you know what? Those guys got better. Yeah, you're the discipline guy. You know, so I get that. But I will tell you this. Look how those guys continue to operate throughout the season, then come back to me, we're tall. You have such a, a commitment to stopping the run, and as you mentioned, yeah. it's been very successful. Does that make play action harder for your guys in the second level? Man, that makes football hard, <laughs> you know. Um, I wish there was a, a, a magic call that you could stop it all, all right? But it just, listen, everyone's going to have a hard down at some point in the game. And listen, when we're committed to the run like we are and being able to stop it, Right. Sometimes they put the secondary in a tough situation. Those guys got to win their one-on-ones. But there are times, man, where we're back and we're defeating, the, uh, protecting the pass, and then the guys up front have to win if they do try to run the ball. So, man, it goes hand in hand. It really does. And the thing is, our guys continue to learn that. And that's one thing to the discipline part that we got to do a better job of. It's a little bit different, but um, Okuda will be on the other sideline today. It's be good to see him. Yeah. Why did it not work out with him here, do you think, in retrospect? You know what? That's a hard question. Um, and I don't look at it as it not working out. I look at it as him getting a better opportunity somewhere else. And that happens across this league. Um, there are some guys that, that's drafted to a team that, man, it just doesn't work out. But then they go somewhere else, and, man, they become pro bowls and all pro. So um, that's just how it is. And you guys seen certain guys that it happened to. So, I mean, hell, I was – with the Jets, and I was a, a really good player, and then I leave and go to Texas, and, and still a good player. <laughs> so, <laughs> not trying to toot my own horn, <laughs> but the thing is, as you go show you, man, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes things don't work out in one team, and you go to another team, you become a, a dominant player. Sorry about that. Does uh, King Jeff do that? Do you think? Huh? Can Jeff do that? He yeah. has the capability to do that. I mean, he has all the physical traits that you look for at that position and he works his butt off. So I know for a fact he's doing that down there because he gets a second chance. And we text each other uh, quite a bit. So we still have a good relationship. Just wanted to quickly ask you about Kyle Pitts. It almost feels crazy we're not talking about this guy more, but 
uh, he, he just hasn't produced at, yeah. at a high level in the passing in the last two years. And so you still see the clips of him winning these route releases and oh, getting yeah. wide open. So like how where are you still to not be that breakout game for him? Well, he, here's what I do know. Um, looking at offense, this it's only one ball. And when you have players like the running backs that they have, you have a player like London, then you have him. Um, you have the quarterback that can, you know, some, do some things outside the pocket. Um, I think it's only a matter of time when he does break out, not against us, but um, that guy's a really good player. And there's a reason why he was drafted the way he was drafted. And there's a reason why he did the things he did when he came in as a rookie. So, um, man, he's a good player and we're aware of him. Out of rhythm yourself as a, as a coordinator? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, um, I, I hear you on that because coming out of that game, it felt like, God, man, you just wanted to play more plays, you know, um, and have a bigger chance to impact the game. But sometimes it goes that way, and then there's other times that you end up punting the ball a million times or returning a bunch of punts or whatever it is. So that's kind of part of the game. You got to be ready, and uh, you never know what game you're going to get a bunch of opportunities in and what game you're not, and you got to treat them all the same way. But yeah, I hear you. How does um, David Montgomery's injury kind of affect what you guys are going to do? Just because Craig's an important part of what you do, and you know, Bam's coming out from the practice squad. He's got some special teams. Like, how, how does that all shift what you've got to do? I thought you were going to say when you asked that question that you knew that the role on offense and defense was going to impact their special teams role. But <laughs> no, I'll say it for you. Um, yeah, really, it'll come down. It will come down to their role on offense and defense. Obviously, you know, anytime an injury happens to the top of the roster, usually one of two things happens. Either a guy comes in off the, you know, roster that maybe wasn't active a week before, but he's on the roster and he comes in and becomes a starter or a guy on the practice squad becomes a starter or something like that. Or if not, then that role gets shifted and guys bump up and then you end up adjusting everybody. So obviously, depending on how they play it out on offense, we'll kind of adjust on special teams. But I'm assuming it'll be a collaborative effort and it'll probably be multiple guys just with a little adjustment. Cordero Patterson's played for them the first few games, or at least hasn't done the returns. So, first of all, because they've got somebody else returning, I'm assuming that guy's really good if he's returning over Cordero, but are you still conscious? Yeah, of I would race? expect Cordero back there um, deep. He's a great player. Um, we've covered against him a handful of times, and he can obviously affect a game quick. Um, so we're counting on him being back there going into the game. Um, obviously, if he's up or down, they decide that. but. Our thought process is he's definitely healthy, so he's probably playing. And if he's playing, I'm assuming he's going to be back there. Why has he been so good? What is it about his style or his willingness to return some of those kicks, I guess? That yeah, uh, it is a great question. Um, you know, I, I kind of would say a part of it is his mindset. I mean, he's, a, he's trying to return every kick for a touchdown. Um, he's trying to make a, a great play every time he touches the ball. Um, so that, that's part of it. Um, he does have a unique feel for finding space and finding cutback lanes and setting guys up and pushing the coverage one way and then kind of winding back another. Um, but just really kind of a, a knack for being a ball carrier and finding open space and moving defenders. Um, he's long, he's strong, um, he breaks tackles, um, he competes. Good player. We know your affinity for putting pressure on, on teams and making them return it. Is there ever a guy or a situation maybe with your roster with moving pieces where you just throw your hands up and say it's not worth it or is that just not in your DNA? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Really, ultimately now the the kickoff kickoff return is really all controlled by the return team. They can elect to take a fair catch with the ball in the five. They don't even have to return it. So you could say, well, we were trying to make them return it, but they really have a choice now. And then the kick return team can decide. You know, if the ball's eight deep, they can bring it out of the end zone from eight deep. So you really, as a as a cover guy, you really don't have much control unless you think you can drive the ball all the way out of the back of the end zone. Um, so ultimately, it's up to them. Riley only has one field goal attempt this year. It was obviously a big one. Can you explain just the challenge of you know being on the sideline for, for almost two full games and coming out to, to make the biggest play of the game? 
Yeah, well, he's got some PATs too, so that helps. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way we say it is every kick counts, and it really doesn't matter what the final score is. I mean, they all count. I mean, the game's going to play out differently based on those guys making kicks or missing kicks. The last game, Seattle missed two kicks. You know, it might affect how they call the game later on. Um, so every kick counts, whether you make them, you don't make them. Um, they're all big kicks. League is obviously trying to make the kickoff safer with all these new rules, yet you guys lose James Houston, a pretty violent hit on the kickoff return. Is there, does it feel maybe helpless at times that, that the kickoff is just a, a violent play? That's just what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, for me, it's, it's devastating losing a player. Um, on a on a special teams rep, but really to me it's devastating losing a player on any rep, um, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. As a coach, you hate it. Uh, you hate it when it happens in practice. You hate it when it happens in a game. Um, I think I said a year or two ago that you know I've seen injuries occur in walkthroughs. I've seen them occur occur in non-contact practices, contact practices, games. Um, on offense and defense, there, none of them are fun. Unfortunately, it is part of the game. And I do think the league's done a great job of trying to make the game safer, you know. Um, and the, the only other thing that I would say to it is, like, I know people make a big deal about, you know, injuries on special teams. But I would also tell you that every game I think I've come out of as a coach, we've come out of the game with more injuries on offense and defense as a team collectively than we have special teams players, you know. So I think the game's inherently has some degree of danger. It's on all three. It's in all three phases to me. They design the game, they design the rules. We coach the game and play the game, and we're going to try to do it to the best of our ability, and ultimately the safety of the game is really up to the National Football League and how they want to see the game play out. Hey, Dave, on, on Patterson again, does it change what you ask of, of Jack on kickoffs when you know you have a guy back there that has no problem bringing it out nine yards deep? Yeah, so that is a good question. I, I would say going into every game based off of their returner, based off their return group, I will adjust a little bit of, you know, kind of what we're doing to try to help increase our odds of being a successful play in our favor if the returner does decide to return it.